Um, my name is Sean, um, and I'm going to be doing sports in China. Um, so first, a little introduction. I just click. There we go. Um, who am I? I um, am a senior here at the University of North Carolina, aka also the National Championship University, as we all probably know. Um, and my major is psychology, and my minor is Chinese. Um, and that is also why I'm also focusing on China today. Um, my parents are first generation immigrants from China, and so I grew up in a Chinese household, and I visited back multiple times throughout my life um, and next year I will be staying here at Chapel Hill pursuing my master's degree in teaching for elementary education so this is perfect um, but the reason why I wanted to focus on sports today is because of obviously this past semester has been very much uh, overrun with basketball and especially in our state and at the school so so I wanted to um, kind of focus on sports um, in China specifically. Um, it's, it's kind of a field that I personally don't know much about. So doing this and preparing for this uh, presentation, I was able to learn as much as I hope that you all learn today as well. So let's get started. Um, so first off, I wanted to ask you all a question. Um, and if the teachers can write in the answers in the chat box or so, um, what are some sports that you play or just physical activities that you do? And what do you think are some of the most popular sports here in America that you watch, that you participate with your family or friends in? Um, yeah, so if you can take a bit, and I'd love to see your answers. This will be in the group chat. Yeah. Soccer, basketball, football, karate, baseball, volleyball, a lot of any everything with balls. Yes, that's very popular. And tennis. What would you say is the one first most popular sport in America? That is very like, this is American sports. If a class can come to a consensus. All right, I'm waiting for football or soccer. Did you know, fun fact, soccer in every other country other than the US is actually called football. And that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because we're playing with our foot, with the ball. But somehow the U.S. has changed football into a different sport. So now it's kind of confusing. So make sure if you're talking to someone outside of the U.S. and you're referring to soccer, that it's actually football. Because they don't understand what soccer is. But basketball, yes. Basketball is very popular. And I was also thinking baseball. Yeah, American baseball is very, very popular here. Awesome, thank you for those answers. So now on to um, thinking about the country that we're gonna talk about. What do you think of for sports in China? What do you think of when you think of Chinese sports or Chinese physical activity? What's something that comes up in your mind? And you can write it in the chat again. There's no wrong or right answer. Just want to see what y'all are thinking. I see Kung Fu, swimming, gymnastics, dancing. Anything else? How about some athletes? Do you know of any Chinese athletes? If you can think of any. It's kind of hard when that country's on the other side of the world, so. I think, is that Bruce Lee? Yes. <laughs> I agree with that. Nice, nice. Okay. 
So, um, oops, how do I, there we go. Okay, so I kind of searched up on Google the first images that come up for Chinese sports. We have here ping pong um, to the left. We've got um, kung fu in the middle, kind of with all the kids in line, karate, kung fu. Um, and then two stars, um, Yao Ming, I don't know if um, you all know of him, but he's probably one of the first kind of, uh, he's a basketball player and he became really, he was one of the first Chinese uh, famous basketball players that came to America. Um, and so he was kind of like a model image of um, kind of a basketball player from China. Um, and someone said gymnastics earlier, so yes. Um, so yeah, y'all had kind of like an idea of it, and we're gonna go more into it now. So um, starting off with kind of traditional sports um, or traditional physical activity, I wanted to touch on martial arts slash kung fu, what we talked about earlier. Um, so first off, um, there is a difference between kung fu and karate. They're not from the same country. So kung fu is from China, but karate is from Japan. Um, so some people sometimes get those two mixed up because they both start with K and they kind of have the same idea and the same uh, physical activity. But remember that Kung Fu is from China while Karate is from Japan. Um, so this practice has been going on way, way before even being able to physically write down or record history. Um, there has been multiple styles that has branched out from this uh, art, and I had listed some of them here, Shaolin, Tai Chi, and Xin Gong, and I'll kind of go into those briefly. Um, but pretty much think about it as like, people are trying to figure out ways to defend themselves and fight for themselves when they didn't have weapons yet. So that's how old this, this practice is. Um, and now it's been kind of also, certain branches of it has been um, more into uh, showing artistic style and beauty and also like working on health and being more healthy and active as well. Um, so Shaolin um, is a branch of martial arts that started in the Shaolin temples in Hunan. Um, there's some movies out there. I think Bruce Lee was in probably one of those movies as well. Um, but it was a very famous temple that um, was a teaching place for people who wanted to learn this type of martial arts. Um, and so that temple is very famous in China. I think I've, I've visited way back um, when I was in middle school or elementary school, so I don't really remember it, but it was a very grand temple and a lot of uh, disciples would go there and practice this art. Um, tai Chi is um, this art of more working towards having a healthy life, exercising, and kind of having self-care. Um, and it is different from the um, typical, I think, martial arts that we think of, of fighting and like uh, battles and such. And it's more of an individual, um, slow moving, but powerful uh, way of exercising. Um, most times, if you're in China and you're walking around, you might see like the middle picture we have here, where there's a group of people practicing Tai Chi in the middle of a park or on the street, and they're all just kind of doing the movements together and practicing it and um, just like having a healthy way of exercise for the day. Qing Gong is one that um, I don't think many people have heard of. I didn't personally, um, I've never heard of it before searching this up, but it's kind of the same as um, Tai Chi, where it is focusing more on um, balancing one's body and breathing and um, slow movement and just working towards a healthy body. Um, one thing, other thing I want to mention for Tai Chi and Qing Gong is that they're very, very connected with uh, one of Chinese uh, tradition and culture's belief of Taoism or Taoism. Um, and that belief is just very much uh, surrounded by take oneself and going with the flow, going with the flow of nature, going with the flow of water. Um, and so a lot of the movements you'll see include like flowing and kind of um, 
mirroring and reflecting what nature shows them. But yeah, so that shows you kind of um, martial arts really uh, evolved with the Chinese culture and tradition and history. Um, and there's still so many branches and it's been able to go global as well. Um, you might have seen some Kung Fu studios around your city or town, your area. Also Tai Chi might be something that people are starting to practice, kind of like yoga. Um, but yeah. So my second one um, I wanted to go into um, is the dragon boat racing uh, kind of sport or um, activity. And this um, is interesting because uh, there is a festival that goes with it, um, and that's the Dragon Boat Festival, which is May 5th, so coming up soon. Um, but there's been some legends to how this festival began, began and how this boat racing tradition began, um, back to about 2,000 years back, way back in the old, old days. But um, there's not one exact story for why it happened, but there's two that I pulled out that was very interesting, I thought. Um, one of them is a Qian legend, which is um, Qian was a poet, a very, very famous poet back in the day. Um, and he would console the emperor at that time and give him advice or whenever the emperor had a question, he would try to answer it. But there was the time where the emperor did not believe what Qin Yu was saying. So he accused him of lying to him and pretty much... Um, pushed him out of his, uh, his palace and told him to go away. Um, he was so devastated that um, he, was, uh, he drowned in the river. And the villagers um, all around the area um, really, really uh, in, were, was inspired by him and praised him that they wanted to go out into the river to find his body. So while they were doing that, they had to get in boats and they had paddles and they were looking around the river. And that's how kind of the idea of the river paddling and boat racing started. Also, another thing that goes with the Dragon Boat Festival um, is a type of food that you eat, which you see in the picture in the middle. Um, and this is called, uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what it's called actually. Um, but anyways, it's, um, it's bamboo leaves wrapped around rice, and um, in the rice there is a filling, and that filling could be sweet, it could be salty or savory, um, and people eat it, and it's known, it was kind of thought, or the legend is, that because the villagers didn't want the fish to find um, Huyun's body first, they threw these um, foods into the, to the river so the fish would eat that food instead. Um, but yes, it's a little, I don't know if that's 100% true, but it's a legend. So that's what people <laughs> talk about in China when May 5th comes along, they celebrate. Another um, legend was uh, about a young girl named Cao Yi, who um, was trying to find her father's body um, in the river. Her father was going out into the river one day to go fishing and then never came home. And so she wanted to go find um, where he was and while she was trying to find him she also unfortunately drowned and um, people very much praise her because in the Chinese culture there is that value of loyalty and honor and that's what she was doing for her father and then as more as I searched into some sort of sports or activities um, I came across horse racing. Um, and this isn't really like a typical, I think, sport that we think of. And especially it's very different from the horse racing we have here in America. Um, this is more in the ethnic minority group of uh, the Mongolian descent, uh, descents. So this is more upper in North China, where there's a lot of mountains and plain lands. So the horses can run around. But um, in China, there's a lot of ethnicity groups, as we do here, a lot of people from different backgrounds and different cultures and histories. And one of them is descent people from Mongolia and that um, people who have descended from Mongolia and such. Um, and it's a fun fact, uh, or 
it's a fact that horses are really, really important to this culture because they're a nomadic culture. And that means that they just move around constantly. They don't stay in one place. Um, and how do they move around? They need to have something to carry all their stuff. So horses has been uh, a very solid animal that has been carrying all their stuff around and so they can travel and constantly be on the go. Um, kids in that culture start learning how to ride a horse at the age of five. That's really young. I mean, I think I just barely started to walk or run by the age of five. So if you all were at the age of five, you'd be learning how to ride horses by now. Um, and that's really, really cool. But um, the reason is because horses are needed so much in their daily lives. Um, when they go out to get their food, they must have be on a horse to go long distances. Um, yeah, so they need their horses in their daily lives. They also use um, horse milk and they use it in their food. They use horses just as much as they can. Um, uh, yeah, and so it's a very important animal in their culture. Um, and because they use horses to travel long distances and such, they've started a horse racing festival or competition every year in which the open plains of um, northern China are just open up for them and the horses run free and um, people ride them. And there's a picture of that down here. Um, and you see it's kind of different from derbies over here where the horses are limited to one lane and there's kind of just one area. But this is the whole running field is a whole plain, which is really cool. I want to show you all a video um, about an art or a dance kind of called bamboo drifting. Um, I didn't know about this until I was looking up for this uh, class and it's really, really cool. I want to get your thoughts about it after. So I'm going to play it now. So what do y'all think about that? If you want to, is there any comments? Um, you can type it into the chat. Do you think that's hard, easy? Can you do it? Yeah, they make different shapes. Yeah, they're structures with the bamboos. It's an art, isn't it? They're good at balancing. That is very hard. Yeah, it's very hard. Do you just see the long sticks they had when they're walking or when they're standing on top of the floating bamboo? They use that to balance to make sure they're not too heavy on one side or the other. Yeah, very difficult. And yeah, I bet when they're practicing and they're first learning it, they probably fall a lot into the river. What do you think about the ballet part of it? Yeah, because ballet by itself is already really hard. And then you have to do it on water? Yeah, I don't know. It looks like she is practicing a lot, so she knows how to balance. but. So much balance required, I agree. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. And I think um, one thing they mentioned in there that I'm not sure if you caught was that they're afraid that this tradition is gonna be um, lost because young people aren't really paying as much attention to it. Um, but as we saw, the ballet girl was kind of young and she looked like she really is changing how it is usually done and adding her own twist to it, and adding ballet to it now. Um, so yeah, thank you for your comments. We can keep going on. Okay, so now I want to move more into sports that maybe you have heard about, or modern sports um, that China is pretty well known for and kind of dominates in that sports realm of. Um, so the first one, table tennis or ping pong, they're the same thing, just different names. Um, this one is interesting because this did not originate in China. This is actually from England in the 19th century. So this was invented and started off in Europe. Um, and what happened as uh, culture does happen is that when you travel around, um, you bring what you learn from your old culture into this new place. And that's what happened with the British officers when they were in China. Um, and in Asia overall, they introduced this new 
sport, which was table tennis and ping pong. And then people in Asia, um, especially China, um, liked it a lot and really took it up. And now um, China is one of the dominating um, the sports teams for table tennis in the world. Um, another interesting thing when I was looking up ping pong was um, how ping pong became a um, a way to connect the U.S. and China. So China for a very long time was closed off to the rest of the world um, from 1949 uh, all the way till 1971. The whole world didn't really know what was happening in China and China was just closing its doors, not really interacting with anyone else until the April of 1971 where China out of nowhere kind of invited America's ping pong team to come over to have a competition. Um, and that was the first time that China has extended their invitation and arms to America. Um, so you see this picture in the bottom is a picture of um, the team, the American team, ping pong team on the Great Wall. Um, and so this was kind of, not only was ping pong used as a sport in a competition, but it was also used to build a relationship between China and the US. Um, and that was from there, from the ping pong tournament and the competition, um, China and US's relationship kept on growing and continuing. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. The next modern sport, um, badminton kind of, um, is the opposite on how it happened with ping pong in that it started off in um, Asia and China and then it kind of fused out and traveled over to Europe and the rest of the world. Um, so kind of like an opposite effect. So it started off with just um, a simple little uh, ball that um, called Ti Jianzi where they would use your feet, uh, like, uh, players will use their feet um, and it's kind of like a uh, sack ball and you can just like throw it back and forth with your feet and you can't use your arms or anything um, and then evolved into something called batter door and shuttlecock in which they use the batter door which is a paddle and a shuttlecock which is just like a little ball um, with um, it's like a shutter pretty much shuttle and they um, use that to throw back and forth um, the ball. And if you can look in the picture on the top, that is kind of like the traditional more um, how China, uh, Chinese people did that. And then from that, um, as the British uh, officers I mentioned earlier, um, were able to pick up that sport in China and bring it back over to England, as you can see with the image on the bottom. Um, and then eventually, it spread all over the world and now here we are everyone knows about badminton and play it's a very popular sport um, but it originated in Asia um, and then spread it out versus ping pong which actually originated in Europe and then spread out to the world so yeah that was kind of an overview I thought of some of the main um, sports or physical activities that people in China are known for and have done um, and so now if you all have any questions about China overall or sports in China, I can try to answer them. Or if you have any questions about my own experience or um, just any questions and we'll see if I can give you my thought of, on it. If you want to put it in the group chat. When was it made? Is that the question for badminton or? Um, no. Oh, and okay. So for badminton, um, it was also an ancient. So China's history is very, very long. And compared to the U.S., uh, the U.S. is kind of like an infant compared to China's history. And so this sport actually um, just evolved throughout the times. So I don't think there was an exact date on when um, it started, but it just kept on evolving into what we know of today. I don't have exact dates either. I'm sorry about that. What other foods do they have in China? What other foods? Um, well, what do you think? What other foods do you know um, 
when you go to the Chinese restaurant or if you think about China, what's a food item that you Oh, got a few questions today. Mm, yeah. Gymnastics, yeah. Or do people in China wear different clothes? Cool. Okay. So, gymnastics, um, I know that we uh, see in like the Olympics and such that China is quite dominating in that field. Um, and that does stem kind of off of martial arts and where you just practice with your body. Um, martial arts and Kung Fu really requires a lot of flexibility as well as movements with the body in different shapes and sizes. And so um, because of that practice, gymnastics also kind of like fused from that um, and was a very important part of Chinese culture. Okay. Do Chinese people wear different clothes than the U.S.? What do Chinese... Okay, first for that question. Um, Nowadays, in the modern day, so right now, not really. Um, everyone is so connected all around the world that clothing, clothing is kind of the same throughout. Um, but in the olden days, yes, it was very, very different. Um, as you saw kind of in that picture beforehand of um, when they were playing with the badminton, um, it's... Uh, it was kind of that gown looking wrap um, was worn by both females and males. Um, and it had, silk was a very important uh, fabric in China and it was very much used, it was used a lot versus other fabrics. So that was very different. Um, yeah, that's all the information I have off the top of my head. Maybe go back to what are some of the popular foods in China? The foods? Yeah, that you had asked them to think about. That was one of the first questions. Are they still on it? Yeah, what other food do they have in China? Okay. So um, back to food. I This is perfect because um, I love food, and I even took a class on Chinese food. So um, what's interesting is that the Chinese food you have here at, in America at the Chinese restaurants are very much not traditional Chinese food. And it's not something you'll find over in China, honestly. Um, the Chinese food here is Chinese American food. Um, and the taste here of the food you eat is catered towards American people. Um, and that includes sweeter stuff, um, such as a sweet and sour pork or a sweet and sour chicken. That's not a thing in China. <laughs> um, some items that are used a lot here but are not used in China include butter, um, or cheese, those are not original foods that you can find in China a lot um, until globalization has happened and now there's McDonald's over there as well as everywhere else in the world, but cheese is not something that is usually in a meal, neither is butter, butter is not really used. Um, the staples over in China include rice, um, as well as something called baozi, which is um, kind of bread yeast using um, flour and um, formed in kind of like a ball. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, do, what do Chinese people's houses look like? Okay, so like I said with the clothing, um, nowadays everything's quite similar. Um, in China there's um, a lot of apartment style because there's so many people there that the apartments are very, very high. Um, and very tall and most people live in apartments there's not really houses um, anywhere really unless you are in an area where you're wealthy enough to afford a house but um, most people live in apartments because of the amount of people and the huge population but um, housing wise um, I can talk from personal experience with this because um, as I said my parents are first generation um, and so within my house there's a lot of decorations and a lot of um, posters or paintings around that um, include kind of the tradition um, and those just include 
uh, a lot of red stuff because in Chinese culture, red is seen as something that's a, it's a lucky color. It's a very rich color. Um, it could bring wealth and luck and all the good things that um, people want. And so uh, Chinese people are typically very superstitious. Um, and there's also a lot of um, symbolism that works along with this. So, um, for example, in my house, we have a lot of fish and fish is a representation of wealth and happiness. And so in our minds or in my mind, it's if I have more fish, the more wealth and happiness I'll have. Um, some other stuff in my house, I'm thinking... Um, there's a lot of paper cut um, decorations, so lanterns, um, um, paper cutting artwork is um, something that Chinese people have um, excelled in, um, using that in a form um, of art, and that's displayed around a lot. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, do people in China have hip hop dancing? Yes, I would say that they probably have hip-hop dancing now, yes. Um, I think that was probably something from the Western world that was uh, introduced in China. Um, but I do know that the Chinese uh, population here in America, there's a very big like hip-hop crew culture, especially over in California, um, in the Asian population. But I don't know more about that. Um, okay. Um, what was, what it, was like? it like for you when you lived in China? Okay. And does it really look different from the US? Okay. Um, so one thing is that I've actually never lived in China per se. Um, I've only visited multiple times. I wasn't born there. I grew up in um, the West. I, grew, I was born in England. I grew up in North America and Canada and then here now. Um, and so I don't really know the school life over there or kind of the every day today if I were to live there. Um, but from when I visited, um, it is very different because I grew up here. Uh, my culture is an American culture and I'm used to um, what we're all used to here. But when I go back, that culture to in China is very, very different because there's so many people. Um, there's not really this idea of personal space because there's always people around. So that was very hard for me to get used to. Um, also the language is so different and um, the way family structure is, is so different. Um, but I can go on and on with that. If you have more of like a specific question in living style, um, I can try to do, I can try to answer that. Um, there's the money Yes, the money um, does look very different. Um, so back in the olden days, um, what was actually used were nuggets of gold. Um, and if you know what dumplings are, um, those are a popular Chinese food, right? Dumplings were actually uh, supposed to represent these nuggets of gold. As I said earlier, Chinese people are quite superstitious and they really like to play off of these um, superstitions. Um, and that's why dumplings look like gold nuggets, because the more dumplings we have and the more dumplings we eat, maybe the more wealth we can have and the more gold nuggets we can have. Um, but nowadays, uh, China has transitioned into having paper money, um, as we do in the U.S., and also coins. So, um, What kind of hair do you guys have popular? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what kind of hairdos are popular over there. Um, I'm trying to think of, well, typically Chinese people, um, genetically, biologically hair, Chinese people hair is very straight and thin. Um, so there's not really much uh, shape I think you can put with it. Um, but I know that uh, back in, during the, um, during when there were emperors and during the dynasties, um, the males and females will grow their hair very long um, from watching shows and such. Males actually had a very long ponytail in the back um, and their top would be shaved. So it'd be, they'd be bald until the very back where they have a little, little um, 
braid and that would go really long. Um, and I don't really know why that is, but I can look into that. That'd be really something interesting to look into. Yeah. Oh, I, I one, but yeah. yeah, I can, cause in schools, um, there is a certain uniform one must wear and sometimes there are rules in which you can't have your hair longer than a certain length. And that might also, that might be why some, um, students have a certain like only to the shoulders um probably depending on the school policy um, what type of traditions are there or celebrations parades mm, okay so like i said uh may 5th is dragon boat festival and in some big cities around the u.s there is a celebration of that and there will be like dragon boat races and a whole festival where they have um food and celebration um, and such. Um, there's a lot of different traditions and celebrations um, because China is not a mainly Christian religious uh, population. The Christmas is not really celebrated, um, nor is Easter. Um, but nowadays that is kind of celebrated because it's a worldwide kind of um, thing. But there is, Chinese New Year's, because um, China follows a different calendar than the calendar here. It follows a lunar calendar. Um, and so depending on the moon, pretty much, um, the New Year's is usually the first weekend of February. Um, and so that's when uh, China sees the New Year versus January 1st. Um, and when that comes along, there's a lot of celebrations. Um, there's firecrackers and there's lion dances or dragon dances. Um, there's a lot of money being passed out, um, a lot of new clothing, just some time for a new beginning and celebration. Um, and it's very, very festive and goes on for weeks, actually. <laughs> what type of uniform might the kids have to wear? Okay, um, so it depends, I think, on region and on schools. But um, for the friends that I have, or my, uh, my cousins, um, when I go back to China, I've heard um, they all kind of have a very plain, very basic um, t-shirt with the name of their school, maybe embroidered on the top, um, and shorts or long kind of track pants, depending on the weather. Um, it's not really anything fancy, not really like European idea of uh, private school or anything, but yeah, something just basic allowing them to focus more, um, I guess, on the work at school um, and not having to like think of something to dress up for every day. But um, after school and during the weekends, they can dress whatever they like. Um, what do students write with? Or do they write with something different than in the U.S.? Maybe they're thinking of political Mm, yeah, probably. So um, nowadays, obviously, we have we all have pencils and we have paper um, because Chinese characters are very different. There's a different way of writing it, um, but the materials are still the same. Um, but back again in the olden days, um, pencils weren't available, um, and there would be uh, calligraphy, which uh, you can see like in that picture up on the right. Um, it using ink and uh, it's um, in Chinese it's malbi which is like um, feathered or uh, haired pen uh, haired pen kind of with a it's just a stick and then on the end there is uh, some sort of hair that you can dip into the ink and to write on um, and Chinese characters are very interesting in that it is very much like an art form you can kind of see kind of the beauty of it in the top right, you can see how uh, it flows together and you can, looks like a picture. Um, so yeah, that with writing. Um, um, so can you tell us more about the Chinese Zodiac? Mm. This China has <laughs> okay, yeah, so the Chinese Zodiac goes into the Chinese calendar. Um, there are, how many animals? 12, I think, or? There's 12 or 13 animals, and pretty much every year you cycle through. There's 12 animals because um, 
my year is the year of the pig. And um, every 12 years, I go back to the year of the pig. And that's a very special celebration for me because that means I've gone through a whole lunar cycle. Um, and that's something to celebrate. And so, um, yeah, depending on what year you're born, you have a certain animal attached. Um, and there's superstitions and think thoughts and ideas that uh, depending on the year, you have a certain type of personality or you have a certain type of way that you see life and such. Um, it's very interesting. Yes, they do have zoos. Um, I remember visiting a lot of zoos while I was over there. Um, the structure of the zoos, I think, were a bit more different. They're, they're very different from the ones here in the U.S. in that, um, from the ones I experienced, so this isn't every single zoo in China, but the ones I experienced, um, there was less uh, protection or less uh, caging of the animals, um, and it was more wild. And uh, I actually visited a panda sanctuary last time I visited, and that was probably the happiest day of my life because pandas are my favorite animals, and they're so cute, and you don't really see pandas here in the U.S. Um, because they all um, originated in China, and China doesn't really, um, there's not many pandas all around the world because they're, because pandas only have a specific environment they can live in. Um, so that place in China, they do prosper in. Um, yeah. What are the movies like? So movies, um, a lot of American popular movies are also popular in China. Sometimes they'll play it in English and then have subtitles in Chinese on the bottom. But um, China also produces their own movies um, and they have their own celebrities that are quite popular. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think of what kind of movies I watched. Um, there's a lot of movies based off of books, like popular Chinese books. Um, I remember watching one dramatic movie that was in a series um, and it was from a, a book series that was very popular among the youth, among like college students, among high schoolers. Um, but a lot of American films and uh, Western films are also very popular over there. What kind of themes do you like? Okay. Um, what kind of games? So I'm trying to think of some traditional games that I played when I was younger. Um, well, my dad told me about um, playing with marbles and having like uh, a group of marbles in the middle and then everyone tries to hit as mar many marbles as they can. Um, Oh, the hacky sack thing that I was talking about earlier, instead of um, a sack, it's more of like a, like a badminton shuttle. Um, and that's very popular and like you use your feet to kind of kick it around. Um, and that's seen a lot over there. I've, my cousins all know how to play it. Um, and in the parks and such, you might see a group of people like kicking around um, one of those shuttle, shutters, sh shuttles. Sometimes there's like older people playing Chinese chess or checkers. Yeah, checkers. Um, oh, there's um, there is this game called. It's like the Mao. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but uh, it it uses checkers or um, checker-like material. Um, and on each one there is a certain uh symbol and everyone kind of builds their own little wall that has all the symbols on it. Um, I don't know exactly what the rules are, but I've heard it's really, really fun. And my grandma used to just play every single day and they can gamble with it. You can just play for fun. Um, but there's like a bunch of little symbols and each symbol means something. And like, if you play well, then you can get all of the little checkers in the middle or you lose your checkers and such. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so pandas live in um, forests, or um, and pandas are mainly in the region of uh, Sichuan, which is up north and kind of to the west. Uh, yeah, I think it's yeah, it's up north where there's a lot of mountains, regions, and a lot of forests and such. Um, 
and that is where they that's their natural environment um and that's where all the bamboo is and that's how they eat all the bamboo there um can you speak some chinese for us or can you count to ten <laughs> count to ten i can count to ten in chinese for you um e r san si wu liu qi ba jiu shi sounds very different <laughs> doesn't it it's actually written very different too the numbers are written differently. Um, were Pokemon made in China? I don't think so. I think Pokemon was probably um, Japan or Korea. A lot of the comics like Pokemon or Digimon or um, Naruto, all of those were more Japanese uh, anime and manga. Do you want to know the animal for the birth year 2006, which I can look up? Yeah, we can look it up. <laughs> um, and maybe if you want to teach them a few more words in Chinese, like hello or goodbye or yes or no. Yeah, um, so hello is ni hao, um, and that is pretty much ni is you, hao is good. So ni hao is like you good, pretty much, or hello. Um, uh, thank you is xie xie. Um, that's two same sounds together. Uh, it's the same word together or the same character together. Xie xie. Um, it's very hard because some of the sounds produced in Chinese, um, if you spoke in English all your life, you've never really produced it before. Um, and so there's a different way your mouth is positioned and your tongue is positioned that um, if you haven't practiced and if you haven't really used that position before, it's very hard to make that sound. Um, I'm still struggling sometimes because English is my main language um, and I'm learning Chinese right now, but there's certain words that or characters that I still can't really pronounce properly. Um, also in the Chinese language, we have different tones and that just means there's like a different uh, way you um, say a sound. So if I were to use one sound um, being ma, M-A, right, ma, you have four different tones in Chinese that can mean four different, totally different things. So the first tone is a straight tone, so you just say like, no intonation, no nothing, just ma. And then the second one is kind of like an up tone. So you kind of do a little ma, like an up towards. The third one is a dip. So it's like a, it's like a V, a dip. And you kind of do that in like ma. And you can hear that dip. And then the last one is like a descending. So it'll be like ma. Um, and each one of those means something different. So it's also very hard to think about, like, when you're speaking, you have to think about the different tones as well as the different sounds. So 2006 is the year of the dog. So 2006 is the year, was the year of the dog. Um, and that was actually the year um, before the pig. So it comes the dog and then the pig. The pig is the last one of the zodiac and it goes right back to the beginning with the mice or the mouse. Yeah. Um, do they celebrate birthdays, and how do you celebrate? Yes, so, um, like I said that the zodiac calendar or the lunar calendar is different, so sometimes people celebrate two different birthdays because we follow the one that everyone here does, with January 1st being the beginning of the year, but also um, with February, um, the first weekend of February being the beginning of the year. So sometimes people celebrate two birthdays. Um, but for birthdays, uh, there's some traditions and such that my family likes to practice, which includes um, eating noodles. And the reason for eating noodles is because noodles are really long. And so by eating noodles, we're thinking, okay, like have a long life. The more noodles I eat on my birthday, the longer I can have and more years I can have to celebrate. Um, what else is there? Um, cakes weren't really um, that popular until now, um, having cakes um, because sweets uh, 
sugar wasn't really, um, there's a different type of sweet that is used over in China using these like red beans or um, black beans or sesame uh, seeds. That's a different type of sweetness versus like chocolate or such here. Yeah, I can keep going. <laughs> yeah, I can take more questions for five more minutes. Um, you put sauces on food, what kind of food? So sauce, um, the sauce you see here, like the sweet and sour sauce or like uh, um, other sauces you have at Chinese American restaurants um, are not really used in China. They're a little too thick or a little too rich for the Chinese palate or the Chinese taste most times. Um, but there is different, soy sauce is a very popular ingredient used in different seasonings and sauces. Um, but usually the sauce um, used in food is very light, very, um, just to add a little bit of flavor, but not overpowering. Um, what are some different foods in China, and can you describe the popular places? Yeah, so um, there's different provinces in China, um, like here the states, we have different states in the U.S., they have different provinces over there in regions. Um, Beijing is the capital, um, and my family lives in a place called Tianjin, which is about an hour or so away. Um, but China is, uh, is a very big country, like the U.S., very big. So different places in China have different ways of talking, as we do here with the southern accents versus the northern accents. But the thing in China is that in these different places, sometimes they have such a thick accent or such a um, way of talking that common Mandarin people, so people from Beijing might not understand. Um, so depending on the region, um, also geogra geographically it's very different. So Beijing is kind of in the central north, um, not high enough to be in the mountains by Mongolia. Um, so it's quite flat and plain, um, and it's colder usually up there as well during the winter and summers. And then if you move down towards Fujian um, by the coast uh, province, that Fujian is the closest province to Taiwan and Hong Kong. Um, it gets really tropical during the summer and very hot and heated, kind of like North Carolina, actually. And there's different plants over there as well. Um, I think seeing something is kind of like palm trees down there, but not exactly palm trees. Um, and then if you move towards where the pandas live in Citron, um, that's also a colder region, a lot of mountains, a lot of forests, um, all a lot of like beautiful nature. Uh, there's a lot of national parks over there as well. Um, but yeah, it's also on the mountains by Tibet too. So those mountainous regions are very beautiful. Mm -hmm. okay. I asked if that means if they're the year of the dog, if that's their spirit animal. <laughs> some information on the year of the dog. Um, Any other questions? Is there any other questions that I can try to answer? Again, if you're really interested in some of these stuff, you should go and search up some answers yourself because I only have my answers and my own experience. So if you want other uh, knowledge and want to keep on learning about it, you can go um, and search it up and read about books or watch movies. Um, If there's no other questions, um, thank you all so much for listening. I hope you kind of learned something different today and something new. Um, and thank you all for commenting, asking all these amazing questions and being engaged. Um, I hope you enjoy your Friday.